I got a feeling, guys. I got a feeling that we're about to see the revival of the sport of mixed martial arts in a land where it all began, Japan. Now, there's always been lots of great fighters coming out of Japan, but in the past year or two, they've been getting a lot younger. Like, a lot younger. We've been waiting for this, right? We've been waiting for Japan to rise and become a global superpower again in MMA, like it was in the days of Pride and Dream. And now with Ryzen kind of leading the way of reviving Japanese MMA, we're starting to see some new talent come up. So here are 11 fighters that are going to change the face of Japanese mixed martial arts. Ryua Chenryu Iwamoto. He's 6-0, he's a featherweight, and he's mostly been fighting for Shuto. He's finished five of his six wins. Now he is undefeated still. He trains out of MMA Z Gym. Now in my opinion, he's ready for a step up in competition. So we'll see if he stays with Shuto this year or signs with a bigger promotion. Another guy that I'm really excited to see how far he can go is Wataru Yamauchi. Now he's 23 years old and fights at Flyweight. Training out of Fight Farm, he also has been fighting for Shuto. And look at this, what really stands out about this guy is the experience of the opponents that he's already beat. Together their record is 46, 36, and 8. That's about 100 pro fights total fight experience from his opponents. And like I said, just 23 years old, 5-0. He's got a long future in this sport. The next guy is a guy I've been watching for a while. The leg hunter, Takuma Sudo. He's 23 years old, fights at bantamweight. He is seven and two and trains out of extreme Abina. And he's already fought for Ryzen, Shudo, Fighting Nexus. The thing about this guy is he's all about the leg locks. Six of his seven wins have been finished by leg lock. He's coming off a loss to Shoji Sato in Shuto, but since he's just 23 years old, he's got a long road ahead of him, and I'm sure he's gonna continue to improve. I know there are even talks about him joining Road to UFC at some point, so he's definitely on the radar of the big guns. Let's see what he can do. Okay, next up, speaking of Road to UFC, we've got Patrick Sho Usami. Now, Patrick has been fighting with Ryzen recently, but before that, he was slated to appear on Road to UFC's 2022 season in the lightweight division, but had to bow out of his fight. Patrick is 6-2, and, and five of his six wins come by knockout. Again, since he's such a young guy, he's got some incredible knockouts. Hopefully we'll get to see him back in Ryzen in the near future. I can't wait to see what he can do. Next up, fighting for the PFL, we've got Yamato Nishikawa. This kid is only 20 years old. He's got a crazy record of 21, four and six. He started fighting as a pro at only 13 years old. Now he came into the PFL and he lost his first fight in the PFL earlier this year but he showed a lot of endurance in that fight. He trains out of Power of Dream Sapporo and previously has fought for PFC in Shuto. He's only 20 years old, but hopefully he can slow things down a little bit and uh, make the right improvements, and I'm sure he's gonna have a really bright future. At one point last year, he was slated to be signed with the UFC and fight Magomed Mustafaev at UFC 281 in October, but some contract issues with Shudo prevented him from joining the UFC, and now he's in the PFL. All right, next we've got Yusuke Kinoshita. He's a welterweight in the UFC and is the first and only fighter to make it into the UFC via Dana White's Contender Series. He is just 22 years old still and has a six and two record. So he's still at the very beginning of his career. Before fighting for Dana White's Contender Series, he had already fought for Pancrase, for Deep, and Ryzen. He's got a lot of really high level experience. In his Contender Series fight, he had an amazing knockout and currently trains at Kill Cliff FC. Now he may have dropped his UFC debut against Adam Fugit, but I'm sure we'll see him back stronger than ever. All right, next up, we've got Road to UFC 2023's Shin Haraguchi. Shin burst onto the scene very uh, unexpectedly this year. Shin is just 24 years old and fights in the lightweight division. He blew through his first fight in Road UFC 2023 and is a favorite to win the whole entire lightweight bracket. Shin trains out of Brave Gym in Japan and mostly fought for Grachan, a Japanese promotion, up to signing with Road to UFC. Despite only having a few fights on his record, 
He already has wins over fellow Road to UFC competitor Kim Sang Won and has also beaten UFC veteran Naoyuki Kotani. His wrestling is lights out and he hasn't really been in any danger in any of his six fights so far. I expect we're gonna be hearing from this guy for a long time going forward. All right, now we've got Chihiro Suzuki, who is a 24-year-old featherweight who fights for Ryzen. He's going to be fighting for the Ryzen featherweight belt here soon at Ryzen 43. Currently, he's got a 10-3 record and trains out of Crosspoint Kichijoji. He's on a win streak with Ryzen right now. Before that, fought for Pancraze, and he's got wins over Masakazu Imanari, over Ren Hiramoto, Sora Yamamoto, and Yoshiki Nakahara. Let's see what Suzuki can do at the highest level of the sport when he fights for the Ryzen belt. All right, now getting into the top of this list. Number three, we've got Ray Tsuruya. Ray just celebrated his 21st birthday and is looking like an absolute killer at flyweight. He is 7-0, he trains at Paraistra Matsudo, and he looked like an absolute beast in Road UFC's flyweight tournament this year. He's also a favorite to win that whole flyweight bracket. Before fighting with Road UFC, he fought with Pancraze, with Deep, and he has finished all seven of his fights within two rounds. At just 21 years old, you know this guy's got a long future. Let's see what Ray Tsuruya is all about. All right, now we've got Tatsura Taira, who is 13-0, guys, in the flyweight division. He fights for the UFC and has been can't miss TV so far. He has won three straight in the UFC, submitted his last two, and at just 23 years old, he trains at Paraisa Okinawa. Let's hope that the UFC continues to bring him along slowly. No need to throw him into the upper end of flyweight. Let's keep giving him some mid-tier fights, eventually some at the lower end of the top 15 of the division. But I'm really excited for Tyra. He's been a lot of fun so far. Really crafty submission guy like a lot of great Japanese fighters are. I'm not totally sure how high his ceiling is just yet. I need to see him fight some more elite competition, but hopefully some of the strength and conditioning can come along well with Tyra, and I fully hope that someday we'll get to see him in the top five of the UFC's booming flyweight division. All right, last and at the top of this list is Makoto Shinryu Takahashi. Takahashi is just 22 years old, guys, and he's looking like an absolute champion already. He's gonna be fighting Kyoji Horiguchi later this summer for the inaugural Bellator flyweight belt. And if he can beat Kyoji Horiguchi, then he will cement himself as one of the best flyweights in the sport. I can't believe the UFC passed up on this guy, especially after he won the CFFC flyweight belt in the United States last year. Before his most recent showing in Ryzen, he also fought for Deep and Pancraze. He's got a whopping 16-1-1 record and he trains at Paraistra Matsudo. I think we're gonna see Takahashi around for a long time. He's gonna be one of the hottest flyweights in the whole game. And I expect that Ryzen and Bellator are going to do everything they can do to hold on to this guy keep him out of the UFC's clutches. But man, what a prospect we have in Takahashi. He has looked like an absolute killer. He submitted Daichi Kitakata in his last Ryzen fight by arm triangle choke, and he looks like the full package. Deadly on the feet, lights out wrestling, tight submission game. I'm just wondering how he's gonna do against the well-rounded game and deep well of experience, especially in the title fight level against Kyoji Horiguchi. One of the fights I'm most looking forward to of the second half of 2023. So that's it guys, that is my list of my top 11 Japanese prospects right now under the age of 25. Of course, there's a lot of other good guys that I'm leaving out that are just over 25. You got Renya Nakamura, you've got Shuya Kamikubo. A lot of other great Japanese fighters that I'm excited about as well. But man, these guys under 25 look like killers, and there's a few more even coming up on the horizon. Which one of these fighters do you think has the highest ceiling in MMA? Drop me some comments, check out some of these other videos, and we'll see you next time.